Today, I'm going to show you how to create a complex symbol using Sketch. In this video, I'll show you how to create and manage a table, how to organize your layer styles, and how to complete overrides seamlessly. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up an empty sketch file. If you're new to sketch and haven't used it much before, I recommend watching my introductory video into sketch. In that video, I go over the basics of how to get started and how to create symbols. This video is a little bit more advanced, so I'd recommend watching an intro video first. I'm going to create a table filled with different data points. So I'm going to create a movies table that will include title, date, and a few other pieces of information. So first I'm going to click R to create a rectangle and give it a light background color. Then I'm going to create my header, which will be a slightly darker area that will contain the header values. So I'm adding title, date, a rating, the number of reviews that the movie has, and any awards. Then I create a row for each data entry. Next, I'm going to start by creating data entries for this table. So first, the title area will have a title one. I'm not sure what the data will be yet, so I need this to be like an empty state for the data that will go in it. So I'm creating a title one, that's a generic name, then a random date, a random rating and reviews number, and then a potential award. I'm just changing the coloring and the styling of it slightly. And now I have my first data entry point. Then I'm going to duplicate this row over and over again to fill the table. Now I'm just fixing some of the alignment So now I'm going to create the symbol out of this. So I grab the whole table and I say create symbol and it's just called table because that's what I call the group but you could change it if you want to. So now I have this symbol and when something becomes a symbol you can complete override. So every single text area is an override. As you can see this gets very complicated very quickly because now I have so many copies of different layers that it just is like 4.2 copy. 319097 copy. It's really confusing to know what exactly I'm editing here. But if I were to write, you know, something else here, then it would change one of the values here. So this is the row that it was affecting. But it gets very complicated very quickly. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go into it, and I'm going to organize it. So when I get into the symbol level of it, now I'm going to organize it. So that way I can complete overrides on the page level and it's much easier for me to understand what's going on and where the information is going. I like to start off by organizing it from the top left across and then going down. So that top left title should be the very first value at the top, then date, then rating, then review. So I'm going to grab these and move them upward in the symbol and then reorganize them. So title is first, then date. This is row one and so on. And now I'm going to organize it by numerical value. There we go. So now it's organized in numerical value. Now, anything else that I don't really think I'm going to edit, like these backgrounds, I'm just going to put them all together in a group and call it background. To know that's the background styling, I'm not really going to have to edit it. So if we return back to the instance, now we see the table and we have it organized. So it's title, date, rating, reviews, awards, best picture. So I know those are the headers and then I have it organized by the rows. So I can estimate that if I make a change here, it'll change that first one and something maybe here would change that second one. But it's still not very organized in here. I see a lot of copies and it's kind of confusing. So let's go back in here and make it even more organized. So that row one, again, I'm going to organize it by the column. So the left value is first and the last value is the rightmost value. 
And I'm also going to rename this so it's easier for me to understand what is going on here. So I might do one dot title. So I know it's the first row and it's the title for the first row. This one I'll call one dot date, one dot rating. This one, one dot review. It's just a way for me to try to be as organized as possible. So when I go back to the higher level of it, it's easier for me to understand what is going on and where I can complete my overrides. So now I'm going to do that for every row. In the top area, there are all the headers, and then I can clearly see which row and data value I'm editing at any time. So here I'm going to add another value for title. And when I click enter, I see that it is now the title for the first row. If I add a second title to the table, I see that it is affecting the second row, but it is center aligned. So I have to go back into the symbol and make the title left aligned. Now since I created this as a text style, I could just refresh the text style and now it's applied throughout the whole entire table. So now when I return to the instance, I see that both titles are left aligned. So now I'm just going to affect some other values and put in some different data points. So now I have this table that I created that is a completely organized symbol. So at any point I can look into the override panel and change whatever value I'd like. So I hope you enjoyed this video going over how to create a complex symbol using Sketch. Please let me know if you have any other questions about the topic and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching!